We're back with more Discovery Kids. What you see here is pure fantasy. Experts have determined that T-Rex and toddlers never actually lived at the same time. Good thing for the toddlers. But since our question of the day is, what did the dinosaurs eat? We're gonna check in with a bonehead detective named Greg Erickson. He's dug up some clues about T-Rex's favorite snack. In fact, he's even got some of his leftovers. Looks pretty good. Let's go with it. But Greg's not gonna eat this bone. He's gonna experiment on it, because this new bone's a lot like this old bone from the pelvis of a Triceratops. Let's put on some bonehead x-ray specs and have a look. When Greg examined the fossil, it looked to him like dino leftovers. When I first saw the pelvis, it, it uh, had all kinds of, of punctures and gouges in it. Uh, we counted about 60 bite marks in it. Uh, it basically looked like a, a giant dog had been gnawing on this uh, huge bone and, and uh, kind of really worked it over. Now, we know there were no giant dogs back then, and even if there were, no pit bull could ever take on a triceratops. So who had the choppers to do that kind of damage? Greg examined the bite marks and came up with a theory. The big eater was none other than Tyrannosaurus Rex. But to prove it, he'd need one thing, a dental putty. We took a dental putty. Uh, this is the sort of uh, putty your dentist uses to make casts of your teeth. And we took a big wad of this and we, we pushed it down into uh, one of the deeper puncture marks. And when we pulled it out, uh, it came out looking uh, very similar to an actual uh, adult Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth. The next step was to take that piece of bone and put it on a machine called a hydraulic press. That's a real T-Rex tooth about to bite down on the bone. This machine's going to tell him how hard T-Rex could bite when he made a meal out of Triceratops. All right, everyone. Here we go. Well, uh, it's, it's hard to fathom the magnitude of the forces involved here. This, this tooth is, is punching through these, these bones. It, it, it's almost like a, a hot knife cutting through butter. It certainly convinced me at that point that T-Rex uh, was, uh, was, was quite a, a, a mean, rough fellow. How mean? How rough? Greg calculated that T-Rex bit down with a force of 3,000 pounds. That's 10 times as hard as a great white shark can bite. And we all know how painful that can be. <laughs> Definitely. Looks like even back in the dino days, going out for dinner was no walk in the park. But there's one more mystery to unravel in this scrum delicious case. We've seen everything that went into the dinosaurs. Next, we're going to take a look at what came out. Watch where you step. Our bonehead detective pals use all kinds of evidence to figure out what the dinosaurs ate. And sometimes the best clues can be found in the uh, grossest places. That's right. Poop. As they say, what goes in must come out. So grab your pooper scooper, kids. We're going digging in the dinosaur litter box. Of course, the detectives in the field call it dung. And this detective is dino dung expert Karen Chin. One of the hardest parts of Karen's job is figuring out if what she's holding in her hand is dino dung. Actually, when you look first start looking at dinosaur dung, it doesn't look like your typical fossil dung that you'll find in museums. Most of that is rather, oh, sausage shape, or looks quite a bit like uh, dog droppings. So, dino dung looks different, right? Exactly. It just kind of looks like a regular old rock. And there are lots of rocks in Montana. And anywhere Karen steps, there could be some dung. And to help her find it, Karen has millions of little helpers. Introducing the dung beetle. Uh, welcome to the Dung Beetle Diner. Table for two? Yes. Uh, the lady will start with the dung. And as for me, is your dung fresh? Yes. Then I will have the dung as well. For over 200 million years, these little guys have been living on and in animal droppings. When Karen finds a fossil that looks like a rock with dung beetle burrows in it, she knows she's got her dino dung. What they would do is stuff uh, dung down into the sediment and lay an egg right in that dung. And the young grubs, when they hatch out, would have plenty to eat in those provisioned burrows. In the area where Karen was dung hunting, they found thousands of bones of Myasaura, a duck-billed dinosaur. There's a herd of them now, trotting across Montana. Hey, did you guys make the mess Karen found? Unfortunately, we can't interview the dinos, Sammy. 
But Detective Karen examined the dung and found chewed up plant material. And since Mayasora was a plant eater with strong teeth, the connection looked pretty solid. Right, Karen? So you can imagine that the dinosaur that produced this mass of fecal material must have been a fairly good-sized dinosaur. And the Mayasora was approximately 24 feet long and was certainly capable of producing quite a bit of dung. But it's no surprise that one of Karen's biggest discoveries came from a different dino, one of the biggest eaters of all time. In the piece of probable T-Rex dung, we found bits and pieces of bone. And by examining these pieces of bone, we were able to tell that these were actually uh, pieces of dinosaur bone. So this is really exciting information because for years and years and years, we've been speculating what these large carnivorous dinosaurs were feeding on. But now we actually have direct evidence by looking at the dung that Tyrannosaurs did actually feed on other dinosaurs. Wow. What a way to end our day at the Dinosaur Diner, where giant sauropods have enjoyed tons and tons of leaf and twig salad. And the meat eaters devoured their fellow dinosaurs. Very rare. Lucy Costello, you asked the excellent question, what went in, what came out? Jim Barlow, you told us how much Brontosaurus the sauropod wolfed down. About six bales of hay. And Bob Barker, you got all hot-blooded and disagreed. You can swallow without chewing. You don't waste any time. And you can be really hot-blooded. Peter Dotson, you blew us away with your explanation of dino indigestion. In a word, it produced wind. And thanks, Greg Erickson, for showing us T-Rex's dental records. But, uh, you tell him the floss. It's almost like a hot knife cutting through butter. But Karen Chen, I think we'll miss you most of all. You showed us that we can find some of the best evidence at the end of the trail. And we're certainly capable of producing quite a bit of dung. And for that excellent discovery, you received the Bonehead Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Field of Poopology. Congratulations, Karen. See you next time, everyone. Wow, all that food in the diner sure made me hungry. Really? It kind of made me have to go to the bathroom. Well, as we've seen, it is all part of the same process. Can you let me go now? I really have to nope, go. Nope, you have to stay. Ah, nice try. Sam, stay here. No. Stay here. Sam! Please. Sam! I'm going to explode. My eye teeth are floating.